what is it like dating in your thirties? So I've not been very cognizant of the shift from my twenties to my thirties because uh, my dating life was quite bad in my twenties also, <laughs> and uh, so I mean it was bad then; it's kind of bad now. I feel like the vantage point that you have in your thirties is that you are the narratives that you hold on to when you're young as a woman, you know, um, based on your gender and how sometimes the whole world of dating and getting married and relationships is fed to you, you somehow start breaking away from that because a lot of the um, spaces in your life you fill with your own, you know, uh, you basically create a world for yourself independently, which sometimes we are, you know, conditioned to have a man take yeah. care of. So I feel like in a lot of respects, you become your own person. Yeah. A lot of the shackles that keep you somewhere held back, you start seeing through those patterns. Maybe some of us, at mm. least. I mean, I, I can't really talk. No, I agree for because well, else. the inadequacies you're working towards filling yeah. on your own. Yeah, yeah. So in terms of um, in your thirties, you. I mean, at least I. Um, as much as I sometimes still struggle with attachment, toxic attachment patterns that I think I have for whatever reason, I see through a lot of bullshit. And whoever I've spoken to in their 30s, people don't really settle for shit. You know, yeah. nobody has time to waste. True. Um, you see through people's potential if they haven't achieved it till then, you know. A lot of the weird romantic ideas around dating start taking a backseat and you start treating it as, as something that will serve you in in a sustainable way and yeah. be healthy for you yeah. um, and for people around you as well as maybe the life that you've built for yourself yeah. at that point. So I think the only tough thing is that you, you stop compromising on certain things which are non-negotiables. You figure out what your non-negotiables are and you don't settle for shit. You, I at least don't make excuses for bad people anymore, yeah. which is a huge shift. Uh, from what I used to be in my 20s. Um, but the sad thing is that um, as a woman, I don't know what the situation for men is dating in their 30s, but as a woman, you're also dealing with a lot of men who who have access to a lot of women, sadly, who are also not raised to be their own people. Yeah. So you're constantly navigating um, a pool of people who under the garb of either being intimidated or not wanting to work hard enough to get to the levels or places that women these days sometimes individually do, uh, don't really want to go ahead with things. Yeah. And as, as I said, you know, sometimes you just see through a few tropes that, I mean, at least I do because of which I can't be fooled into like romanticizing something that is not... Substantive. Yeah. Uh, and will not serve me in yeah. the long run. So I think that's something that I struggle with, have been struggling with. I think the public persona thing also somewhere, not that I'm a phenomenal public figure, but I think the kind of work I do, a lot of people don't understand this job market, you know. Mm. There's a lot of backlash that content creators get. I feel like everywhere one goes, people do have a strange chip on their shoulder. Even this Reddit thing that I was telling you about, or the yeah. gossip mongering, comes from a place of having a chip on their shoulder. Because to be honest, it looks like it's minimum effort and maximum returns. But you are parting with a part piece of your soul constantly while being judged all the time. Mm. It's not a profession that a lot of people see potential in, take seriously. Mm. And there is obviously, you know, um, the public scrutiny thing which may or may not entice people to want to, you know, get entangled with. Yeah. Because either you, I mean, whatever, for whatever, for whatever consequences it could entail or for yeah. whatever reason, you know, breach of privacy or something. Yeah. So I think in that capacity, yeah, it's a double-edged sword for me. Huh, because they could think, hey, do we also now become content? Yeah, yeah, that too. <laughs> and secondly, if there is a fuck up, you know. Haan, sabko pata lagega. Haan, to, you know, like you could do like whatever. There is power and power yeah. is intimidating sometimes, yeah, you know. I agree. Um, so... I guess in that aspect. And then also the social prejudice, you know, ki mereko, I think I turned, like since the time I crossed 35, like I realized even on dating apps, uh, I don't find a lot of like, 
matches because maybe the demographic that a lot of men my age want to focus on is comparatively younger hmm. so i constantly also sometimes run the risk of being fetishized and inappropriate questions around oh, why no. am i single and um, uh, you know i don't know my sexuality my character everything i hate that you yeah. know and it's such a common notion kyunki a man at 39 yeah. Yeah. is still a bachelor yeah. but yeah. a woman at 39, 39. is bechari ha is a bechari bachelor yeah. ka bahut hota hai yeah. matlab you can yeah. be exactly the same age as accomplished yeah. as independent yeah but um, society views yeah. women with a very different lens yeah i mean i don't know there is this like it's a part of the whole objectification narrative where your prime i feel like i have never been this empowered ever yeah. like i do not want to go back to my 20s this is my prime yeah but i think you as a person as a as a gender is is pitched to be in your prime in your early 20s basically as long as you're not impressionable you're not of worth yeah. which i think makes you a depreciating asset and i see that you know yeah. even in my progressions also the fact that you know at the age i'm in or post 35 the chances of you being a very like um, fertile womb and all of that all of these narratives somewhere you know feed into the strange prejudice that one senses yeah um when one tries to date i feel like not everybody also has it so hard i think maybe i'm just supposed to be an example like you know i'm supposed to go on platforms and be like hey you know there's this romantic side but then there's this dark side and i've been there so i can give you examples of that <laughs> i think life is somewhere in the middle of yeah. the dark and yeah. the romantic possible i also but... feel like because i've also been disillusioned enough i i consciously don't really seek dates yet yeah. um but i might get into that but i think the reason that i got out of it is because that's just it's not been easy and when it's not easy you know bani the tough is very tough yeah and it just makes you question yourself all the time and i feel like the kind of profession i'm in i'm questioning myself all the time anyway yeah. i don't want that coming from my personal yeah. life i think you well. can handle stress in only one part of your life yeah you know you have to have something that doesn't like yeah. keep you on your feet and yeah. on your tenterhooks so yeah, yeah. 